and we are live. Thank you very much for joining to this Ask Me Anything with Salesforce Developers. Today, we are going to talk about the future of Heroku, and we have an amazing guest with us. My name is Julian Duque. I'm a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce, and today I will be your host. But before we start, I have some announcements. Remember that Salesforce is a public traded company, so don't base any financial decisions of the content you are going to be uh, watching today only on products that we have generally available. Also, join our Trailblazer community. We have a developer group on our Trailblazer community. You have the URL there. Please go ahead, join us. We have a lot of people also interested in learning about Salesforce and also on Eroku as well. And use the SFDevs AMA hashtag on Twitter if you also have any comment or question for us. Please, here on the chat in YouTube, that's the place where you are going to ask all of your questions about the future of Heroku. And now with me, I have a great, great guest, Mr. Andy Fassett. Hello, Andy. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, Julian. Very pleased to be here today and answering all of your questions. I just can't wait to get started. Thank you so much for inviting me. Awesome. We are super, super happy to have you here. Andy, thank you very much for your time. We know that you are super busy. You have a business to run and a lot of different things on your plate. But thank you for taking the time to join us and to join in this amazing Salesforce developers community to talk about the future of Heroku. I have Heroku in my heart. I love Heroku. Uh, pretty much that's the main reason why I joined Salesforce. I, enjoy, I joined as a developer advocate for Heroku. And then I had the opportunity to know about the whole Salesforce ecosystem and I still have Heroku on my heart. So this episode is super, super important for me. Andy, Thank you, Julian. please introduce yourself in your own words. Yeah, thank you, Julian. So I'm Andy Fawcett. I lead uh, product for Heroku. And we'll go through a little bit more of the leadership team of Heroku in a moment. Uh, but my background is in Salesforce. I've been uh, developing and engineering with Salesforce for over 10 years now. And uh, very much enjoy the developer tooling, developer experience that Salesforce brings. And uh, delighted to be here today talking about Heroku, which is a key part of the developer experience for us at Salesforce and I know for many of you out there. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that's that's me. Beautiful. So Andy, uh, before we start with the questions, it, it would be good if we have like some sort of contextualization and introduction to Heroku. Maybe folks that are joining us uh, don't know about it yes. or want to learn more. So please, uh, what do you have to share with us? Give me, give me, give me a moment, Andy. I want to enable your audio here because folks are only listening to me and not to you, and I want to enable you. Let me, Let me see, how can I add you to my... One moment, folks, that we had to do some technical adjustments. And if you wanna take a look at what Andy has to say, I need to fix something here. Give me a moment. I need to do some adjustments. Wait a second. Uh, host the screen. I'm doing some settings here. So I can have you. 
Okay. Can you uh, talk again to confirm if we have you here? Yeah, I'm, I'm here, ready and waiting. Is my audio good? Yes. Okay. Ready to get started? Yeah, perfect. Now we have you. All right. People in the chat, can you confirm that you can also hear Andy Fawcett as well? Hello, my name is Andy Fawcett. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can confirm that I can hear you and uh, I ha I think I have everything great here. So yeah, please go ahead. T tell us about okay. the Heroku. Fantastic. Okay, folks, uh, the, the, we're just building tension there just to, to get to get everybody ready for the presentation and discussion ahead of us. So apologies for that, but we're already in rocking and rolling now. And uh, yeah, as I said, my name is Andy Fawcett, our lead product, and I'm here with Julian, our amazing host. And as a reminder, we do actually have a Heroku enthusiast group on Trailblazer. I posted some details and announced myself there only yesterday and updated the side file with lots of great resources about Heroku. So uh, please uh, feel free to join that. We'll be definitely using that as one of our many channels to communicate with our customers. And uh, I wanted to take a moment just to celebrate our leadership team at Heroku. Uh, we have uh, Bob Wise, my boss. He's the CEO of Heroku. Uh, within Salesforce and uh, Gail Frederick, she's our CTO, SVP of Salesforce Engineering, and uh, myself, of course, there. And Avish is also leading our architecture. So many of us are, in fact, all of us are on LinkedIn, and you can see also our Twitter handles there. So uh, we're a very open uh, group. You're very welcome to connect to us in your favorite channel of choice, even Trailblazer community as well. And I just thought it'd be great for you to meet uh, the broader leadership team behind uh, the amazing Heroku product. Uh, one uh, actually a little bit of um, side uh, commentary I'd like to give you is on this opening screen, uh, you saw the Heroku logo. If you look closely, that's a 3D printed Heroku logo. And that's actually 3D printed by Bob himself. So there are a few of them in circulation and uh, quite a steal to get hold of a 3D printed Heroku logo indeed. So thank you, Bob, for creating those. And I'm sure we'll be seeing a few of them in the future as well. So Heroku's vision is a trusted premium platform to build and run mission critical customer engagement applications, web, mobile, API applications. And we want to make sure that is the trusted, secure, and reliability that you've come to expect, not only from Salesforce, but also from Heroku as well. Those critical workloads run 24-7 all around the world, and we want to make sure that continues to be the case for our customers. We enable customers to build integrated applications at scale using languages of their choice, a super powerful feature of Heroku we're talking about in just a moment, while offering a world-class developer experience that's easy to learn um, but also very powerful for advanced users when you need it. So 2022 is a year of uh, significant uh, investment for Heroku. We invested a lot in our mission criticality in terms of our infrastructure, and our security stance. We also launched our amazing public roadmap. We're going to talk a lot more about that in a moment. We also launched some low cost plans as we pivoted away from removing our free tier. We had created some low cost, low cost plans and also a series of programs for students, nonprofit, and latterly, just this year, our open source program. So we're being very intentional about the types of engagement with Heroku, but also making sure we really suit the audiences that are available and need to use Heroku for different purposes. We also made improvements in our security stance with multi-factor authentication, which is now enabled for all accounts. And we also made some improvements to the Heroku data product in terms of the type of connections that you can make and the ways that you can work with those that database. And Heroku really is an opinionated platform at its heart. It is ultimately running on top of AWS, which requires a lot of infrastructure knowledge, networking and security. Uh, complexities that we really alleviate you from having to understand. We realize that you just want to deploy, manage, and scale your applications for your users. So it is the fastest way to go from an idea that you have, push that code into our repo, and we'll do the deployment for you. And really what that means is all of the things on this slide is being done for you. Without Heroku, you'd have to consider AWS, consider different infrastructures, load balances, routing, how you manage logging and monitoring. 
there's a tremendous amount of value that we do behind the scenes, including upgrading and and making patch uh, patches and security changes to all of this infrastructure. So ultimately, what this does is manifest as a as a time uh, value prop for you. Essentially, on the on the left hand side, you would really be starting out figuring out how do I do developer operations, how do I do operations and manage all the infrastructure, even though it's relatively easy. In, in the cloud, there's a lot of infrastructure that still needs managers. It can get easily very complicated. And once you've done all of that, then you get to build your application. And really, on the right hand, on the right hand side, see we see we see that Heroku completely inverts that pyramid, so that the bulk of your investment, your engineering time, and your ideas are really focused on getting the application out to market and beating your competitors and delighting your customers and users. So really, our value prop is a, this slide is a really good slide to illustrate where the return on investment can go if you're using Heroku because you're investing that in your developers, in your ideas, and getting your, your experience out to market more rapidly. And we focus on making that super easy. Um, you can use the tools of your choice, the languages of your choice, and push that over to Heroku, and we'll manage that and, and scale that for you. And then your users can connect to that experience, whether it's an API or a web or mobile application. We also have a, risk, a rich tapestry of add-ons, much like the, e, the App Exchange in broader Salesforce. As a developer, you can go to an ecosystem of additional services beyond the ones we provide in Heroku that allow you to add additional data stores or logging or telemetry or scheduling technologies to really enhance and accelerate your development uh, processes even faster using uh, some uh, add-ons that are available in our ecosystem. And those languages that I mentioned earlier, there are many languages, in fact, beyond this slide, but these are the ones that actually Heroku provide as first-class support. So those are managed and maintained by Heroku. We have individuals in our engineering team that are dedicated to the languages on this screen. They are very deep, deep experts in these languages and know what's best for them in terms of the tools and the stacks. And you get that experience through using Heroku. But it's also worth pointing out that we have a huge amount of... Uh, uh, build packs that are actually driving languages like .NET and other languages from our community. And that's the power of Heroku. You can choose the level of complexity that you want to jump in at and really de develop practically anything on the platform. And uh, this part of uh, Heroku that uh, I'm talking about here in terms of the value prop and the return on investment is not is best... Uh, uh, proven by reading for yourselves. And this is an industry analyst uh, uh, impact that we had done by Forrester, who uh, took a number of our customers and sat down and spoke to them. And you can use the QR code to read all about that. And the figures speak for themselves, a 285% return on investment. And that's back down to some of the things I've just spoken about, focusing on building the application versus managing the infrastructure focusing on using those build plaques rather than curating and understanding which are the stacks and languages that you need to configure and set up. The build plaques do all of that for you. So when you're using Heroku, you're really, you're really laser focused on building an application. And that's where a lot of these numbers come from. And Heroku is built for scale. And uh, this is a, a slide we shared first at Dreamforce, and I wanted to reshare it here today. And 9 million apps have been created, uh, 2 million managed data stores, fully managed data stores, whether that's Postgres, Kafka, or Redis. And that add-on ecosystem continues to grow with 175 add-on services for you to choose from and uh, accelerate your application development with. So broadly, what can you build with Heroku? It kind of seems a bit bewildering that you can just host some compute and host some data. Well, our customers use it to host applications, whether they're B2C applications for their customers or even for their partners. Sometimes they're building APIs, and it's very common now to start building open API APIs because it makes them much more accessible and discoverable. And that's a particular favorite of mine for those of you that have followed me for a while. I'm very API. Um, uh, I get very excited about APIs. So hosting applications, actual for end users, for partners, for even employees, um, is what people do. Um, customers of Salesforce also, of course, augment their CRM systems. So they're using Heroku to uh, build extra connectivity or integration with CRM, or maybe connect CRM data to those public facing experiences like websites and mobile applications. And Data Cloud is a very new 
innovation from Salesforce, and that's no exception in terms of how easy it is to use Heroku with Salesforce products. We actually have an add-on on the market on the ecosystem for connecting with Data Cloud, and the Data Cloud API is also fully available to Heroku developers. So as I say, it's a fully managed application uh, development platform for your B2C uh, needs and beyond. It is enterprise grade. We have a number of the typical uh, compliances that you can go and find in our documentation. Uh, we have a shield uh, a set of products which allow you to do encryption at rest and that applies to our databases, also networking and uh, you have a private uh, workspace that you can provision your applications into as well if you so desire. Uh, so ultimately, all of this leads to faster time to value and increased developer productivity. So building some of that on your own is quite an undertaking. And not only building it, but also managing that from the point forward that you've built it and making it secure and patching it and so on and so forth. So all of this leads to that faster time to value and increased developer productivity. So this is an exciting bit for me. This is where you get to interact with us beyond this call, beyond this presentation, through our public roadmap. Um, so we launched this um, back in October, I think September time. And here's a QR code. Not only can you read about what we're researching, what we're working on, what we're, what's coming soon, and in fact, what we've just recently shipped, but you can interact with it as well. You can upvote things, add commentary, and even create your own ideas. So I want to take a few moments just to give you a highlight of since we actually launched this, what some of you have been contributing to and giving us your amazing feedback and strong signal for, and which drives the Heroku roadmap for this year and years beyond. So the most upvoted ideas around fine-grained access control, we have a lot of controls within, within Heroku, but we're hearing loud and clear from our customers that we want even finer grain control over environment variables, billing information, and the ability to apply permission controls to teams rather than just individuals. Larger Postgres and Dino stores, our businesses are growing, your businesses are growing, and it's important that the ability to scale more data and scale more compute grows with it. So we're hearing more memory, faster CPU and storage, and we're actually addressing a lot of that this year in our roadmap. Network modernization, HTTP 2.0, IPv6 are also very common. You can see, in fact, uh, number two in this little screenshot half on the slide here. More ability for those in education and learning and nonprofits to engage. As I mentioned earlier, we have started plan, uh, programs for those, and you can find out more about those. We'll share some links after this programming. And uh, we want to continue to invest in those type of programs, including also playgrounds for you to experiment with Heroku uh, and students as well. Without credit cards is something that we're looking into. We've heard it loud and clear that that can be a challenge for sure, so we're definitely researching that and teachers. Now, GitHub integration is also something that's a strong part of Heroku. We allow you to connect your GitHub repos to our pipelines whenever you promote something or push it to your GitHub repo, that can trigger a pipeline that will take that through to a kind of review app and then staging and then production in a typical sort of way. And that's a very powerful feature of Heroku we call Heroku Flow. The customers here, are, yeah, you're all asking for well, can we do that with the GitHub app model, which is a, a new, a newer way of connecting to GitHub beyond the current mechanism? So some amazing signal we're getting from you, our customers. Thank you so much for all of this. I also wanted to cover some very relatively recent ideas. It continues to be an area of engagement for you. It wasn't just at the, big, at the time we launched it. It continues to thrive, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So paint more things purple. What do we mean by that? Well, we have an idea from an individual that talks about, well, we've got a relational store, we've got a caching store, we've got a message store. What about a kind of NoSQL store? What would that look like if it was fully managed within Salesforce, within the Heroku infrastructure uh, by Salesforce? More controls over resources. We kind of covered that on the previous slide. Review apps are a very powerful capability for, sale, for Heroku, and they allow you to engage with your internal stakeholders once you've developed your web app and you are ready to push it out to production. We, of course, follow good practices here and go through staging. And part of that is to create some applications that mimic the production environment, but in fact are controlled and managed just for review purposes and get that feedback. And if necessary, you can go and make more changes before pushing to production. 
So more ways in which you can pass some of the source control contacts into that experience so you can better tie where you are with that experience and what, what's happening in source control. And also the resources that we fire up automatically during that review app process, more control over those as well as being asked for. And Salesforce integration, we've got an amazing product called Sail Heroku Connect, which allows you to synchronize data from CRM into a Postgres database, which enables you to do more scale, use your Postgres skills, and even augment some of that data going back into Salesforce using that synchronization tool we call Heroku Connect. But really what about the compute side? That's a really an area that we haven't really focused on in the past. So the notion of a Salesforce add-on allows you to spin up a Heroku Dino where you put your compute, your code, and much as you've seen with Salesforce functions, have that already pre-authenticated into your Salesforce environment uh, where you don't have to reason about connected apps and OAuth tokens and such like. You simply install a Salesforce add-on. Many other things are continuing to be add added to our roadmap. So hopefully you get the idea, amazing resource. Please engage with us on that. And I want to just talk a little bit about what our priorities are right now. Infrastructure continues to be beating heart of the value prop of Heroku. And you've heard that through what I've just mentioned over several slides. It's clear that we're making sure that we're doing the hard stuff so you don't have to. And I want to call that out because that's really important stuff. Sometimes you don't see that. Sometimes your dynos just start running faster. We talk a little bit about that on this slide, in fact. Sometimes you just know that we're doing the best things we can do to av avoid nefarious use of Heroku. So we have a lot of investment in anti-abuse. We're also, as part of that, investing in technologies like Stripe under the covers to make sure that the billing and infrastructure is the best possible experience that we can deliver. And we're also delivering additional availability zones for private spaces as well. So we've got more durability in the system. And also uh, another thing that's happening for us is we're continuing to evolve, evolve how we ourselves use AWS and that technology. It continues to innovate and we should continue to innovate our use of it. And that ultimately allows us to spend more, in, more of our engineering resources building amazing features rather than managing that AWS technology. But it also allows us to take opportunities to look at the amazing AWS technology and think of ways we can provide that in a simpler, more easier to use form. Still many, still very powerful, but easier to consume and easier to integrate within your applications as part of the overall Heroku experience. So for pricing and packaging, we're delivering new dynos and data offerings this year to allow you to grow your compute and grow your data beyond the current uh, packages that we have. And also, in some cases, your existing plans for dynos will simply start going faster because we're just innovating and using more of the AWS technology under the covers on your behalf. So wonderful. So bigger and better, faster as we're adding uh, is, a, is a theme that we're focusing on this year very clearly. So you'll see more regions coming from us. We haven't added regions in a, quite a while for Heroku. So we're all very excited to be expanding. And we certainly won't be stopping there, but we'll be taking stock of uh, feedback from customers before we add more regions beyond these ones. And those faster plans and, and dynos will be coming. Along with general enhancements around HTTP 2.0, we're investing in our router technology heavily. That enables us to do more innovation and deliver more features. Uh, CNB stands for Cloud Native Build Packs. It's an industry standard that's backed by Heroku, used by many industry partners. Uh, throughout the world and it's very key to the uh, experience of Heroku and continues to be so is the build pack technology that drives the choice that you have around languages. Uh, we will continue to improve um, our dashboard UX and accessibility improvements. These are heavily used experiences within Heroku and we want to make sure that we're constantly uh, refining those and uh, shaving off any rough edges and making those the best experience possible. From a security point of view, as you saw from the roadmap, a strong theme in provide more kind of granular control, whether it's write only, whether it's how, who can write to an environment variable or audit trails or automating account recovery. So there's a whole kind of raft of capabilities that we want to bring to market that increase um, your ability to create a secure environment within Heroku. And going to the future, um, we see that in, in, in Heroku's um, history, we have really uh, two experiences to some degree. There's a huge amount of overlap, but we have those that are using Heroku through the online service, signing up, paying a credit card, and those from a Salesforce perspective that are using the contract-based uh, model 
uh, so become a Salesforce customer and you have a contract with us. What we want to do is make sure that there is one Heroku experience. And regardless of how you want to transact with us, you have access to all of those features. And more so in the future, do that in a consumption billing model. And Heroku actually does that for its credit card uh, customers to some degree with dinos and such like. We want to maybe expand that to the whole of Heroku and including our partners as well. And data compute is no exception to that if you want to use data we want to make sure that that can grow elastically with your needs, with the right controls in place, but you get a consumption-based model for your data and compute needs. And going forward, we realize that the world is getting ever more focused on AI and how can we help uh, manage uh, those workloads for those that are delivering innovative solutions around GPT? How can we provide dyno types on GPU, CPUs that allow you to run more of those workloads on our system? Uh, equally, we want to use some of that technology in the developer experience as well. And bill of materials is another industry trend that we're observing and monitoring. And we noticed GitHub recently announced some of the technology around this as well. And it comes down to governance. When you're building applications at the scale you are with Salesforce and Heroku, it's important to know what software is being used, what libraries and open source tools are being used. And the bill of materials provides you a way of tracking that, monitoring that, and controlling that. So that's a very an area that we're keen to invest in in the future to improve um, governance capabilities around the platform, and really empower ecosystems. Uh, a strong part of the Heroku, system, uh, Heroku experience is all of those amazing add-ons that you can take. Uh, we ourselves, for example, use a, an industry technology called Open Telemetry. What would it look like for an add-on provider to be able to be a telemetry add-on provider and provide an amazing additional? experience on top of what Heroku provides for monitoring telemetry by us leveraging the fact that we're using open telemetry and just exposing that um, to add-on partners or even customers. And finally, Salesforce integration. We mentioned that earlier when I went through the roadmap, really talking about Salesforce integration beyond just the data integration. What would it look like to be able to um, send and receive uh, pub public uh, events, platform events from Dynos? What would it look like to be able to access data from CRM and data cloud from your compute environment. And again, much in the similar vein that we've shown is possible with functions, but doing that also with dynos as well. That's that Salesforce add-on experience that I was referring to earlier. So hopefully uh, this is a, a really exciting uh, first chapter for Heroku. There's much more to come for the future of it. We have a really strong leadership team that I've already explained. I'm very passionate about the space, as you hopefully can tell. So let's, without further ado, get into some Q&A and discussion. And I think right now I'm going to stop sharing and that will reveal myself once more to the camera. Fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing all that information about the Roku. It seems uh, there are like a lot of great things that are coming uh, in the future. One thing that I've been waiting for a while is that the HTTP2 support, because I want to start implementing gRPC servers on Heroku, and it will be great to have that support on our yes, networking layer. Okay, so we have some questions, and let me start from this question from Binay. I would like to know more about the background process between Salesforce and Heroku Connect on what happens when a transaction is going through? Yeah, a very good question. So uh, essentially uh, Heroku Connect um, is a multi-tenant uh, service that's running inside our infrastructure. And when you provision that add-on, it creates a connection between Salesforce and your Postgres database. And it's monitoring for changes on either side of those two data sources. So in the case of when you change something in Postgres, it's monitoring for that. And then it's using the Salesforce bulk APIs to actually make those changes. And the reason why I wanted to accentuate the bulk APIs there is that when you're making changes with Oracle Connect, do so in a bulkified way because you'll get the most optimal experience out of the changes that flow into Salesforce. Because we all know bulkification is the best practice in general, but also more so with Salesforce. 
So do keep in mind that when you're making changes to the Postgres database that, that flow and synchronize through to the Salesforce uh, CRM org, that do so in a bulkified way and that allows the infrastructure to also follow that pattern. And then what happens is your triggers and your flows and things will be called completely as normal, regardless of how you actually feed data into Salesforce org. It's always running those technologies. Um, but be cognizant of how much uh, automation is placed in those objects because Heroku Connect isn't uh, essentially a miracle um, go faster stripes for that in automation in Salesforce org. So be cognizant of how much automation is going in on those objects, which you should be in general, and be cognizant of using a bulkified access pattern when talking to uh, the Postgres database. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have another question from Ragul. Uh, can we build a soft phone call center in Heroku? And I think this is a voice over IP solution. Can this be done on, on Heroku? Well, this isn't an area I'm intimately familiar with, but I did do uh, a little bit of research for you and did find that uh, there is some, some starter material contributed by our community on how to use the Twilio clients uh, with Heroku. So I'm happy to share that link with you, but also take a follow-up if uh, we want to have a deeper conversation. I'm very interested in what you want what you're doing there and uh, can help you out. So do feel free uh, to reach out with us to have a deeper conversation about that. Um, but I wanted to just share some initial research I was able to do just before the call started sure. here. So, I, I, uh, I, I, managed, I managed to have some telecommunications experience. Well, that's, I, I, I spent like pretty much five years studying telecommunications on one, one of my first systems I implemented was a voice over IP. Well, the thing with voice over IP is that you will need a special equipment to connect to a landline uh, system if you are going to do the, the translation from IP to like a regular phone line. So in this case, what Andy mentioned will need to be like the answer, like rely on a third party service that provide that gateway between IP and, uh, and a landline uh, or a phone line uh, service. So, Maybe for like a high scale call center, maybe not, but for some use cases, uh, yes, it, it can be used for that if you have that third party gateway to connect to, to a landline. I have another question from Andrew Raymond. Uh, I thought Salesforce was going to deprecate Heroku. I'm confused now. Uh, what's going on about that, Andy? Tell us. <laughs> well, hopefully, this very session proves quite that that was uh, an urban myth. There is no desire, or never has there been, to deprecate Heroku. Heroku is actually used um, extensively within the Salesforce uh, uh, business as well, powering uh, Trailhead, powering many of our services, the multi-factor authentication. Many, many things are used by Salesforce to. Run, uh, used by Hero Salesforce by Heroku. So not only do we have a huge amount of internal uh, motivation to continue with Heroku, but uh, we have a, a huge amount of customer um, adoption that's using both Salesforce and Heroku to build great, amazing B2C experiences for their customers. And we fully continue to uh, want to charge forward in that direction and even go beyond uh, Salesforce customers and, and really provide the, the world's best place to build compute and data um, based um, experiences on the internet. And uh, that's the truth of the matter. So we are 100% here and not going anywhere. Beautiful. That's good to hear because I rely on Heroku a lot for the projects I build internally. And also, if you have followed me on Code Live, where I teach uh, how to like develop applications in Salesforce, I use Heroku a lot. Question from Tech Lead. Uh, Tech Lead is one of those folks that always join my stream. So thank you very much for joining this one as well. Thank you, Tech Lead. Uh, is there any official video channel for Heroku to follow, like uh, the Salesforce Developer One? Um, there was, and there will be soon. So stay tuned on that. Um, that is something that we're uh, working to reinvigorate and restart. And I know Julian uh, is involved in those conversations as well. So watch this space. We will be broadcasting 
news of that on our Trailblazer channel, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, as and when that's ready. But yes, there is a strong desire to reignite that type of medium for engaging with our customers. And we did that many, many years ago with Heroku. It was very popular and we fully intend on reinstating it. Yeah. In the meantime, all of the videos that were published on, on, on the Heroku YouTube channel are now under the Salesforce developer channel. So the story is there. You can like go ahead and search for Heroku content and you will find it there. And as developer advocates and Salesforce developers as well, you are, we are always creating content with, with Heroku included as well. So you can find content on both. But yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Andy, for your answer. And now a question from Jeff. Is there anything new with the ability to stand up a public facing site to a Salesforce backend? All eight places I have worked with need this. Yeah, so ultimately, um, I think Julian, uh, in these resources, we've got our eCars demo GitHub mm -hmm. repository, which shows how to stand up a, um, a, a Heroku Dino, a web app. And it's actually in this case, although you can use your choice of client web frameworks using LWC. And uh, that is a demonstration. It's actually a car dealership is the use case and scenario. And that individual or customer rather is using that to tailor the car that they want to purchase. And that experience then flows into the Salesforce backend to the point that when individuals actually there picking up the car, maybe they're making some tweaks, that same experience flows through into Salesforce. So definitely check out the eCars demo. But in, in a general architectural sense, um, Heroku is able to leverage uh, connected apps, uh, which is an OAuth mechanism for or securely connecting through into Salesforce. Um, also, Heroku can use the aforementioned Heroku Connect experience so that you can effectively synchronize some of your selective CRM data into Postgres and then build your website experience as you would normally against that web, that uh, Postgres database. So you have a number of ways of connecting both a data, um, a, a data connection through to CRM as well as uh, compute. Um, some customers also use the platform events technology um, as well to make that more event driven. Um, we're actually working on uh, uh, re enhancing our resources in this area. Uh, we have to share a link of all of the ways in which you can integrate with Heroku and Salesforce as, as an output from this session. Uh, but I'm very much aware that we're, we're lacking some uh, more uh, tailored experiences explaining how to do that with compute uh, integration and connected apps. So we are actually actively working on it, uplifting some of the how-to materials there. But if you're familiar with the OAuth technologies and connected apps in Salesforce, then you can absolutely build web experiences that do that. If you're familiar with Postgres and you can provision Heroku Connect and just start synchronizing that data, it's a point and click tool to enable that. So lots of ways in which you can uh, integrate not only with CRM data, but ultimately uh, Data Cloud's API as well. Beautiful. Yes, connected apps is going to be your gateway to access uh, Salesforce. My preferred ways besides Heroku Connect, Heroku Connect is so straightforward. Pretty much I don't need to set up anything and it works. But the other ways that are more programmatically that I like, uh, using the REST APIs, it's straightforward. I just make an HTTP request to Salesforce API and I get data. Second, we recently added support for a GraphQL UI. So you can use Gra GraphQL to query Salesforce data. And there are like multiple different GraphQL clients for the languages we support at Heroku. For Node.js, for Java, for Python. So you can build an application using those GraphQL clients and fetch data. Uh, with the PubSub API using gRPC, on a Node.js application, for example, you can also get uh, real-time information from uh, Salesforce. If you go to the Trailhead Apps GitHub repository, the eBikes LWC sample application has a PubSub API use case that uses Heroku. So we deploy an application on Heroku that is connecting to Salesforce using the gRPC client and getting events pretty much from Salesforce Very as well. Cool. There are like multiple ways you can rely on, on, on Heroku to connect 
to Salesforce. Lightning Web Components as well. Uh, with the Lightning Web Runtime, you can deploy anywhere. You can deploy Lightning Web Runtime applications to Heroku. You can take a look at the Lightning Web Components open source recipes. I think it is shared on the resources we are going to share with you all. And you see how can you easily, with just a click, deploy that uh, repository to Heroku and use the power of Lightning Web Components as well. So there are multiple ways to connect Salesforce technologies with Heroku. Thank you very much, Andy. We have some certification questions. People are always interested in uh, growing professionally and certifications is one great way to do so. So this is from Jeff. Are there any new certifications for Heroku plant? I prepare for the exam and failed, but I didn't see the use case for the material for the material covered. It didn't seem like knowledge that will help me build applications. Yeah, thanks for your uh, question there, Jeff. And, and certainly apologies that um, we seem to miss the mark there in terms of the content uh, needed for you to prepare for the exam. Uh, we are actually taking a, a deeper look at the content for the certification. Uh, there are no plans for a new certification, but I think it starts, and clearly your feedback here um, is an example of that for us taking a deeper look at the uh, content and what we're asking folks to learn and also the questions that we're asking. So thank you for the, your feedback. And um, let's connect offline. I definitely want to follow up with you in more detail on that. Um, apologies for the content missed there. But rest assured, it is an area that uh, we're looking into in terms of uh, or actively already looking into in terms of uh, making sure that's the best experience. Uh, we really appreciate the certification program, of course, at Salesforce and even more so the Heroku one. So thank, thank you for your you. question. Thank you, Andy. And another one from Binai. Uh, are there any Heroku certifications available apart from the architect one? Uh, not at present, no, but that doesn't mean to say we couldn't create them. I think part of the aforementioned sort of effort that we're putting into sort of reviewing them is to see whether or not we should have more granular or multiple uh, certifications. So certainly want to hear, and, the, and frankly, the roadmap uh, link that I shared is not just for product features, it's the overall Heroku experience. So if you have desires um, around the certification process, then you can absolutely raise them in the public roadmap as well. And we will consider them just like anything else. Um, that roadmap's for the entire Heroku experience, the documentation, add-ons, certifications in this case. So please, please share your feedback. It will help us an awful lot right now in terms of uh, what we're doing in terms of, of reviewing the, the certification process and content. Awesome, thank you very much. We have another question here. As an ISB of Salesforce, this is from JP. As an ISB for Salesforce, I use, I'd like to use Salesforce functions with my App Exchange application, but I need a playground to experiment with it. It is that possible? Yeah, so we don't have a Salesforce, um, a self-serve rather playground. Um, as you saw in my slide deck, there's certainly something we're uh, researching in terms of customer demand for Heroku, and not just functions. Um, but in the meantime, if you do want um, an environment to play with as an ISV, please reach out to your ISV manager and they can connect with us. And uh, we can follow up with you on that to, to provide you such an environment. Unfortunately, there is no self-serve for that at the moment, but uh, we can provision that for ISVs as needed. Uh, I would also mention that Heroku in general is, is a good uh, backend technology for App Exchange packages, and some of our ISVs are, have been doing this for many years. So it's obviously well known that you can create a connected app or a um, external service within Salesforce for integration purposes. Um, and you can package those. You can also then, of course, point those to a Heroku experience that you're running for those um, ISV packages that you're distributing. So while you can't distribute Heroku itself within the packages, you can create a Heroku service, an API, an open API API that's aware of the context of your um, uh, subscriber orgs. And some of our ISVs are doing that already. And it's an area where we're thinking about more 
uh, written material and how to's on. But uh, I will point out that as an ISV, there are instances of ISVs using Heroku as a back end to their packages, despite it not being packageable. Beautiful. Uh, another question from Binai. Like Salesforce, can we have a developer version of Heroku to learn and to do uh, research with Heroku and Salesforce? Um, this is something that's very close to my heart, and I know Julian's as well. I can't see him on camera right now, but I suspect he's smiling with a big grin. I am. I am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the ask. Uh, there isn't anything in the roadmap right now, but we are actively doing research and discovery in terms of what it might take to do that. Obviously, we want to do that in a safe and secure way, um, and that doesn't kind of further abuse of the platform and the services. So this is a very sensitive area for something as powerful as Heroku, to be transparent with you. Um, but I also fully appreciate the reason why you're asking. And Julian, I don't know whether we've got the option to promote the roadmap item where this uh, where, where we can actually get, if you can add your support and commentary on it, I would, I would, I would very much appreciate that. So uh, if not now, we can share that link. Um, but if you just search for Playground on the roadmap, you'll find it. Uh, mm -hmm. So please give your support and perspectives on the need for that. Yes, now it, it was the roadmap has been shared on the chat. So go ahead, go to issues Thank and you. take a look at there is one specific item about the playground. Go and upvote and comment because that's something that we, we really want and we really need. We have another question here, Andy. This is like on fire and I love it. This is from it's great. Eric. Great engagement. Yeah, first, thanks for sharing. Um, my question is, have you got customers who do not leap into uh, Salesforce Heroku architecture due to Heroku Connect public price? What do you tell them in this case? I, I guess um, not being public, if I understand. Yeah, I, I think ultimately it's difficult um, to know in this case if they're not contacting us. But I think the gist of your comment is more transparency around pricing and and the and what we can do around those prices. Obviously, it's a sensitive area um, for us to share too much about that. But I, I do understand the backdrop of your question, which is all about more transparency on the pricing of it. So that effectively, I think the, the other part of your question is it's an amazing tool. More people should understand how they can get their hands on it. And are we not? Are we doing the best we can to really promote that tool uh, when we don't have some clarity, such as what you're seeking? So, I think uh, I don't know how good an answer that was for you, but I certainly understand the sentiment and recognize that as to why you asked the question. Beautiful. Thank Another you. question from Binai. Thank you, Binai. You have been like asking a lot. That's great. Can you please give an example? for a real-time scenario with insert or update records, how the execution works for both the scenarios. And I think this is about the Roku Connect. Also, he would like to know about what tools are available to check the details of the log information and uh, the physical location of the log. Okay. All right, so the first question, I can see the question in my little cheat sheet, the questions here. So thank you for the added context around Heroku Connect. So in terms of real-time scenarios with Heroku Connect, the thing that I want to call out here is that ultimately Heroku Connect is, a sort of, is an asynchronous tool. You're inserting records in a bulkified way into the Postgres database and in in an asynchronous way, it's picking up those changes and moving those and, and reflecting those into the CRM system. And then if they are new records, then the identifiers, the IDs of the Salesforce records will flow also back asynchronously to your Postgres database. So the big kind of caution here is to make sure that you understand that data access semantic. Heroku Connect is an asynchronous synchronization model. Um, so if you're kind of inserting singular records, that's kind of not going to get the most optimal experience out of Heroku Connect because it's not bulkified. Also, if you're kind of waiting for those IDs to come back through that kind of asynchronous model, 
it could take a while depending on load and also the performance of your Salesforce org. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, some customers have used Heroku Connect to actually push data into Salesforce. And then when the automation runs inside Salesforce, used a platform event to emit that notification. And then the, the uh, Dino application might listen to that. That's one pattern that can be used. But also, as Julian said, Heroku Connect maybe isn't always the best tool for the job. If you're building an interactive experience, um, maybe it's predominantly a read experience, then you can absolutely just read from that Postgres data. And if the, you know, the synchronization latency is, is kind of tolerable for you, then you can just read from that without any limitations. And, and writing back to it, just think about kind of how much latency you want to tolerate and your user experience there. Predominantly, it's a synchronization tool. So if you want some real-time feedback, think about platform events um, as a way of giving you that, the customer that signal or the user that signal something's happened. And uh, most of our customers are doing that in that case. So um, bulkification, uh, remember it's asynchronous and also um, consider using platform events as the kind of semaphore to notify any client that you might be building. And also just depending on the the scale of the client, you may just be using the Salesforce REST APIs, as Julian pointed out. You might not even need Heroku Connect. So you can always just connect using a bulkified um, mechanism with the Salesforce APIs from your Dyno. And uh, maybe use Redis to cache some of that information as well. If you're doing a lot of reads to Salesforce, maybe cache some of that commonly used information. So think about the type of app you're building. If it's a very interactive application, I would lean more towards maybe using Postgres as a read-only cache, Salesforce APIs for the interaction. If it's kind of headless synchronization integration, then Heroku Connect is great for that. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. And we have another question from Andrew. Will Heroku Connect be adapted to support the future no SQL database? That was mentioned on the yeah. First of all, first of all, thanks for the thumbs up on the recognizing the NoSQL DB call out there. Head on over to the roadmap and give that a thumbs up on painting that purple if you like as well. And um, yeah, I think uh, ultimately Heroku Connect um, is a great tool. It's clearly only focused on our DBMS databases. There's no plans right now, but I certainly wouldn't rule it out. Subject to customer feedback and demand. Uh, for expanding that to other data stores. It's, there's a lot of value in uh, the, the Connect experience being declaratively driven. It's point and click. It's easy to set up. There's also a lot of really clever uh, drift detection that we're doing inside Heroku Connect to keep things synchronized as much as possible. So it's actually pretty hard to build these type of things. So to the extent we can extend the value of that to other databases, I'm certainly uh, very interested in further uh, customer feedback and signal on that. So no plans, but I'm not ruling it out. Awesome. Yeah. And and I see one thing in regards of many of the NoSQL databases that are uh, pretty much schemaless. They they don't have a specific schema. And maybe doing the mapping between those two uh, things might be a, a bit difficult. With Postgres, we have a specific schema mm -hmm. and we can do like the one-to-one -one mapping with, with the Salesforce data. Yeah, certainly it would need some form of descriptor. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Salesforce itself has uh, some of the marketing cloud objects backed by a NoSQL um, database. So mm -hmm. it's kind of possible to create a relational layer on top of a NoSQL database. But you're absolutely right, Julian, we would need some form of descriptor around that data in order to make that connection. And, and some of the semantics would change as well since it's inherently non-transactional. Awesome. Thank you very much. And wow, time flies. That's, that's time flies with you. We are like engaged and we have like, like such interesting guest. We have our last question from John. And they noticed that .NET support is not on the roadmap. Are there any plans to eventually include it? If so, when right so again i hopefully uh andre uh, one of my product managers is deeply passionate about this topic and this language is is listening and smiling and grateful for the signal and the request you've given us 
There are no plans right now, but it is a language we're closely watching and subject to further funding or opportunities to prioritize it in different ways, then it's absolutely something we'd consider. But we're not uh, at the moment having that on the roadmap. But uh, there is, again, a roadmap item because others have asked about it, including yourself. So please head over to that. Give it some love. Give it the thought. Uh, give it. Give us some examples of what it means to you. And it will all help and contribute to our roadmap planning in the future. And that situation may well change. And uh, that's kind of the status that we're at right now. So unfortunately, not any firm plans I can commit to uh, or even share right now. But uh, rest assured, it is... Uh, a very frequent conversation about how we can uh, bring that type of uh, language to to market. Thank you for the question. Really appreciate it. No, Andy, thank you, thank you very much for all your time and all of you all there that join oh, us right. in the chat and ask us all these amazing questions and remain engaged with us. Thank you, thank you for joining. You are the ones that make these "Ask Me Anything" with Salesforce developers possible. Andy, do you have any last words for our audience right now? Again, just gratitude and thanks for uh, turning up. I think, you know, we really are passionate about this product stream. I'm like, grateful for some of the direct questions that you've asked about the future of Heroku. It is strong. We are heading in a, in a very exciting direction. I hope you got a lot of that energy and theme from myself and Julian on a personal level, but also the content we shared. And please keep engaging with us. It's super valuable. Our ears are wide open in terms of your contributions in the channels that we've shared here, but motively the, the roadmap. So thank you. And thank you for your future engagement. Awesome. Andy, thank you very much. And remember you all, uh... You can keep asking questions on the Salesforce Developers Group that it's on the Trailblazer ecosystem website. Go ahead, share with other developers, ask questions there, engage with us on Twitter, and keep connecting with us. Andy, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to start closing now this stream. Remember that you can connect to the developer trailblazers from anywhere. Join the community and keep engaging with us using the SFDevs AMA hashtag. And keep in touch because we have more Ask Me Anything in the future. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.